Okay, so first I'm going to go over rules for adding and subtracting integers. Um, when they're the same sign, you add the numbers and keep the sign. So for example, positive 8 plus 4. Same sign, this is a positive 8, positive 4, you're combining them. Add the numbers, 8 plus 4 is 12, it stays a positive 12. Where if you have negative 6 minus 5, when it's a minus, what it means is that number behind it is a negative. So this is negative 6, negative 5. You combine them, you add the numbers, 6 plus 5 is 11. It stays a negative. You keep the sign. So when they're different signs, you're going to subtract the numbers and keep the sign of the greater number. So for example, negative 6 plus 9. This means a negative 6 and a positive 9 you're combining. So you subtract the numbers. 9 minus 6 is 3. Keep the sign of the greater number, which means this is going to be a positive. Stay a positive. If I have 7 minus 11, you subtract the numbers. 11 minus 7 is 4. You keep the sign of the greater 1. 11 is greater than 7, so it stays a negative. When you're subtracting a negative, instead of subtracting a negative, you're going to add a positive. So if you have negative 4 and it's minus negative 10. Instead of subtracting negative 10, what that does is you add the opposite, so it's adding a positive 10. So it's negative 4 plus 10. So now these are different signs. Find the difference between 10 and 4 is 6. Keep the sign of the larger number, it stays positive. One more quick one. 5 minus negative 8, well that becomes plus a positive 8. So 5, positive 5, positive 8, same sign, they're both positive. Add the numbers, which becomes 13, keep the sign the same, positive, positive 13. Multiplying and dividing, I'm just going to be very basic here. A positive times a positive is equal to a positive. A positive, I'm sorry, I'll do a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. If you're multiplying two of the same signs together, it stays a positive. It's only when two of the terms are opposite, one's positive, one negative, that's when it becomes a negative. A negative times a positive is a negative. So 4 times 3 is equal to 12. Positive 4, positive 3 stays positive. Negative 4 times negative 3, negative times a negative becomes positive. So that's positive 12. Negative 4 times positive 3, one's positive, one's negative. That's when it's negative 12 change up the color here. I forget sometimes. So division, let me change this. A positive divided by a positive, 15 divided by 5 is going to stay a positive. Same rules as multiplication. So this becomes 15 divided by 3 is 5. Both positives stays positive. negative 15 divided by negative 5 so again they're both negative 15 divided by 5 is 3 it stays a positive because they were both negative positive 5 divided by negative 15 one's positive one's negative it is going to end up being negative but one mistake I see here a lot is people put negative 3. 
Make sure you understand the 5 is on top, the 15 is on bottom. 5 is in the numerator, 15 is in the denominator. Reduce in this case if it doesn't go in evenly by 5, so it's going to be 1 over 3. Your fraction rules for adding and subtracting fractions. You must have a common denominator. Once you get the common denominator, then you combine the numerators and keep the denominators the same. Put an E on that. So, for this first one, 2 over 3 plus 4 over 5. Okay? The common denominator is going to be 15. So in order to get this first denominator 15, I'm multiplied by 5. But I also need to multiply the numerator by 5. And the second one, to get 5 to become 15, I multiply by 3 to both numerator and denominator. So that becomes 10 over 15 plus 12 over 15. Now you can com add them, combine them, tw 10 plus 12, both positive. Add the numbers, keep it positive, 22 over 15. Remember, the denominators are not always just the two multiplied together. Like for this one, the common denominator would be 12. So I'd multiply this one by 2. Multiply this one by 3. And I get 9 over 12 minus 10 over 12. Now I can combine them, 9 minus 10. Okay, opposite signs, 9 and negative 10. So subtract them, 10 minus 9 is 1. The difference is 1 over 12, it's going to stay a negative because the larger number was negative. For multiplying fractions, you do not need a common denominator. I didn't write that down, but if you need to, go ahead and do that. Okay? You're first going to check to see if you can cross cancel or cross reduce. Then multiply straight across. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. Okay, so here's an example. 4 over 5 times 3 over 2. What I mean by cross-reduce? 2 can go into 4 two times. Okay, so that becomes a 1. You're reducing each of them by 2. Now multiply across 2 times 3 over 5 times 1, and you get 6 over 5. When you're dividing fractions... Instead of dividing by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. But you only do the reciprocal of the one you're dividing by. So for this one, instead of 6 over 5 divided by 8 over 7, I'm going to do 6 over 5 times 7 over 8. Now it's multiplication. Check for cross-reducing if you can. 2 goes into both 6 and 8. So that's going to be 4. This becomes 3. 3 times 7 over 5 times 4. 3 times 7 is 21. 4 times 5, 5 times 4 is 20. That's it. Um, put these in your notebook somewhere at the beginning so you know exactly where they are if you ever need to go back to any of them. Um, so you can, anytime you get stuck on any of these, you're not sure what to do, it's right there, right where you need, you know where it is, okay?